Poets and poetry, you should be much gay, because you have a special day called the Poets Day. It's a day you should poets celebrate, because they draw the present and the future anticipate. On this International Poetry Day, let's welcome our guests here from the English department. We have Professor Akram Habib, who is well known of writing poetry at the English department. And we have Mr. Khalid Dadr, he is a senior student and has written a number of poems uh, in his course. Uh, let's start uh, with you, Dr. Akram. How are you? I'm okay. Thank you very much for hosting me on this unique program, uh, which is held to mark uh, the uh, Poetry Day. I'm very happy like uh, the university has this initiative to host poets in order to mark this day. Uh, my name, as you mentioned, I'm uh, Dr. Akram Habib. I'm professor of English language and literature, and I'm uh, the teacher of uh, poetry here. I've been teaching poetry for ages, you could say, for more than 25 years now. And I love you know, writing poetry, I mean, I love teaching poetry and writing poetry. Okay, it's a br our pleasure here to have you at this uh, special meeting. Uh, actually, uh, Dr. Akram, if you could to, uh, uh, tell us something about the importance of teaching uh, the poetry course in the English department and what play, uh, what role the, uh, the poetry course play in uh, raising the awareness of the students in the English department. Yeah, in fact, uh, poetry, like the course uh, which we are teaching, is like uh, an introduction to poetry, uh, but it doesn't mean that it is the only course. Like, it permeates other courses. Like, it is there in Elizabethan, it is there in Shakespeare. Like, it is over the place. But in this course, like, uh, you know, I uh, intend, like, to teach or to make our students taste poetry. And when I teach poetry, uh, apart from the historical background, apart from the social background, apart from even the aesthetic, because poetry is full of aesthetics, apart from this, I, you know, target the kind of skills uh, the students want to acquire. For example, I go to business. Business, like if I want to brand any product, I need poetic language. If I want to promote any uh, product, I need poetic language. And uh, usually, uh, uh, like, I assign my students, like, something called promotion. Or even, like, uh, you know, branding. Something like this, which builds or capitalizes on the skills they are learning. So, poetry is, like, uh, for the students, the food of life, I would say. But in which field you uh, focuses your uh, experience in, in, on writing poetry? So uh, like, uh, you mean my personal poetry? Yeah, your, your personal experience in writing poetry. Yeah. So yeah. you focus, I think, on the uh, social, on uh, the I, you Palestinian... You know, in fact, it is myriad of, like, uh, you know, purposes. Uh, I, uh, you know, most of my poetry uh, is uh, written, like, to address uh, national and, uh, you know, uh, social issues like the issue of women like uh, issue of uh, you know to defend our land to defend our uh, you know cause to present to give the image because poetry is a peaceful and a very civilized way of defending our rights defending uh, you know our cause so uh, you could say i i have something personal poetry i have uh, you know like celebrating friendship Written about friendship. Uh, the last poem, I think you celebrated the, the Women's Day, right? Yeah, the Women's Day. I have a poem uh, which I wrote, like, uh, not to protest, but rather, like, to assert the fact that, you know, women should have a day every day, not like, you know. So, yes. Yeah. As you, as you told the uh, feminism in your courses. Right? Yeah, I'm uh, mainly a so feminist. So you have so much into the... Uh, Pro-feminist and, like, you know, our society is full of women, so we should, like, respect women, our wives, our uh, daughters, our sisters, every day. So, I, yes, I wrote, uh, like, a poem to mark this day. Okay. I think you wrote also a poem on uh, to celebrate the, the, the Christ himself. Uh, I don't know Christmas. what is the... Yeah, the Christmas. Yeah, and you, the Christ... 
And I, I, I know that uh, there is many researchers in the, in the West, uh, they conducted on this poem, right? Yes, I have a poem called uh, Homeless Christ. In fact, you know, uh, this poem has uh, this nationalistic because it talks about our cause. And I wrote this poem uh, when I found that everybody was celebrating Christmas and the Palestinian uh, were just like having their uh, own uh, concerns, uh, you know, mainly after the war, like this written, this poem I wrote after the war. So it was sad Christmas, like uh, the, so, the poets uh, apologize or the Palestinian apologize for Christmas. Uh, you draw the, uh, you draw the, um, the attention of the world to the Palestinian cause rather than the, uh, the Christmas yes. day. Yes, yeah, but okay. also I appeal to the Christians themselves and even to the Jewish people because we have, you know, the right as Palestinians and because we have also Christian Palestinians who did not celebrate, you see what I mean? And we also have Jewish, you know, people like who did not celebrate because they are supporting. And this poem is not anti-Semitist, you know, like they say, because you know, if you want, like human beings should care for each other. So I found such poetry uh, like is a good means to convey our message. It's a civilized way to convey our message. Okay, this is really great, doctor. But we have like to to, uh, to turn this theory into the something religious. You wrote something about the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, yeah, I, away from the Palestinian issues and the social ones. So you focus also on the religious context. Uh, but it is linked to. Politics, because uh, you know, if you remember, like sometimes in the West, in the West, like uh, people like you abuse the freedom given, like to them. For example, if you remember the uh, Danish uh, caricaturist, like when he uh, drew something to denigrate the image of Prophet Muhammad. So, as a Muslim, I protested and wrote a poem, like uh, as a kind of uh, you know to say who's Prophet Muhammad, like uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is like the Prophet who called for love among all uh, nations regardless of their ethnicities, their color. So in this poem I drew how uh, Muhammad, peace be upon him, was a guide to humanity, not like to Muslims as they say. Because you know people in the West think that Muhammad was a prophet only for Arabs. No, Muhammad is a prophet, uh, you know, for all the world. Okay, this is really great, Doctor. Uh, so you encourage your students also to write poetry and to, to have uh, like uh, such a great experience like you, right? Yeah, yeah. So let's uh, just uh, encourage our students here and take um, uh, Mr. Khaled to just to share us his experience and we will return back to you, inshallah. Okay, thank you. Thank okay, you. thank you very much. So it's uh, uh, nice to meet you here and thanks for hosting me here with uh, a great professor, Dr. Akram. And this is a great opportunity also. Okay. Uh, Khaled, you are a senior student at the English faculty and you have written uh, a, a lot of uh, poems. Uh, you celebrated also the, your distinguished uh, marks in the Islamic University and you, uh, you wrote some poets. So, uh, what is your starting point? Yeah, uh, where, so uh, last semester we had a poetry course with uh, Dr. Rifat. So, uh, at the beginning, Dr. Akram like, uh, was traveling, was outside Gaza. So, uh, I was like sad because Dr. Akram is, was supposed to teach us this course. So, uh, Dr. Rifat, in his first lecture, as a part of the assessment, he told us that uh, you have to write something called poetry collection, and you will uh, get 20 marks. So, uh, 20 marks. So, these 20 marks will be replaced uh, from the final exam. So, if you have a final exam out of 60 marks, you will like have your final exam if you wrote uh, if you write a poetry collection out of 40. So I was like, from my personal experience, I was like, oh my God, how I'm supposed to write a poem? I don't, uh, I have never like uh, write, wrote, written something. So uh, Dr. Rafat course like, like, was like uh, a game. It's like uh, full of it levels. It was a challenging, I uh, think. When you like, uh, f you finish a level, uh, a new level, harder level pops out. Mm -hmm. So. But you get benefit at the end, right? Yeah, I started like to write and to try to write a poem. So I failed and failure is like for me is a success because you gain experience.
Okay, here is the, the powerful point, I think. Yeah, you, you fail, you developed. Yeah. So uh, once we uh, had uh, Ozymandias, Ozymandias like by Percy Shelley. So uh, Dr. Uh, Rifat posed that you have to do your reflection along with a challenge. This challenge was like to write a parody. So uh, I was thinking, yeah, I can do it. So uh, when I went home, I, start, uh, I started writing. So it took me three hours. But for me, I, yeah, for the first time. But uh, I, I, I discovered that writing a parody for the first time for someone who has never written a poem is much easier to write a poem without Is it nothing. like this? Because parody, like, you have to follow the poet, yeah. uh, poem and you yeah. have to make it the same pattern so just add your wo your words like is it uh, easier dr akram to write a, a parody yeah. for this yeah as he said like uh, a parody is like uh, a kind of imitating for the sake of either like uh, uplifting the poem or even like ridiculing the poet and his idea so i think it's not like difficult because you know you have to uh, take the same rhyme, the same rhythm, and even sometimes to take the, the same words. So this is very creative and uh, I thank Dr. Rifat for uh, doing this. And uh, you know, uh, we, we used to do this with uh, another uh, poem, uh, you know, Raleigh's poem or uh, Marlowe. And Raleigh like was a, sh a passionate shepherd. And like the students, I used to ask the students to write their own parody. And you don't imagine how they creative they were. Uh -huh. So you recommend uh, writing parody from the first Yeah, parody is a first for, step. Yeah. The parody is a first really step. It's really great, yeah. Because, you know, uh, if you write a parody, you become uh, uh, an insider in the poem. You mm -hmm. you start to to see, to explore, to be, to live inside the thing. Mm -hmm. And this is like the first step of, you know, uh, loving poetry. Okay, this is great. So you wrote a parody, Khaled, right? Yeah. So, what uh, after that, the uh, next? So, uh, <laughs> I commented this poem, so I was afraid how Dr. Rifat would react. So uh, I just w was waiting for a notification to see uh, what Dr. Rifat like will say about this poem. So when the notification came, like, uh, oh my God, Dr. Rifat like is writing, isn't that impressive? Uh, one mark for you, Khaled. So I was like uh, happy. It was the first time, and uh, Dr. Rifat like uh, encouraged me, and it was like he he liked the poem. So, uh, I so was the like first feedback for your uh, writing poetry was was wonderful. Yeah. So this is right, like a, an encourage encourage you to uh, complete, so, right? So uh, what did I do? So I post my poem on my personal page Facebook. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was bragging off this poem, like, oh my poet, I, I wrote a poem, and Dr. Rifat like gave me a mark. And that is was not okay, easy. So uh, also uh, our professor in the university, like Dr. Hassan and Nabi, commented on my post and encouraged me to go on. My students, uh, other students, and uh, graduate students also uh, encouraged me to uh, complete this way. And uh, I have like much sense of writing poetry. So it was a, gr a great pleasure, a, a great experience, like uh, to remember. So after that, you are uh, you still uh, writing poetry, like? Yeah, so... Uh, what is I, the, numbers of, the number of uh, Yeah, I poems? wrote like uh, 11 poems. So uh, Dr. Rifat like asked us, uh, uh, we have a day of poetry day. Mm -hmm. The next lecture will be a poetry day. So you have to uh, give uh, and recite the poems that you wrote. So I commented like I will be reciting my poems. So Dr. Rifat replied, uh, plurals? Uh, because you wrote one. I told him I wrote five and I wasn't writing like just one. So this comment like was a lie but uh, <laughs> it was a precursor to me. So you have to finish five poems tonight. What do I do? So uh, I did it in a way. So it was a challenge like uh, uh, the second day like I recited them and they were like uh, very beautiful and Dr. Rifat uh, uh, yeah. Was really like great. Great. Even though it's a lie, but yeah. it's something, no, no, it's a no. lie. You have to understand, yeah. <laughs> like, the lie is like the following. one. I commented, uh, I wrote five poems, but I haven't, like, I hadn't, like, written them yet. So this comment, like, was to motivate me to write them right now. So I did, I did it. So this is, like, uh, the experience. Then I completed writing uh, the poems, like, I have 11 poems. 
uh, and uh, I can share you some of. Uh, you the, can read something of your poetry. Yeah. If you want. So uh, uh, I I will I will not like read a parody because I will read one of my uh, own poems. Okay. So I have a poem uh, called Freedom. So it goes like this. I hate my life. I love the way I hate my life. It is true that my life is a sharp knife. I wish I had a bird life. Freedom I love. It is not out there. For everyone, but freedom is everywhere. How dare feel I free? Where is no air for Palestine? It is my love I talk and share. Yeah, this is really uh, very good. But at the beginning of the at the beginning, uh, you I think that um, the listener will uh, like imagine that you are ob uh, optimistic about the um, about the life, um, pessimistic about yeah, the life know, itself. Me, but I, I at the end, you give like a space or a, a hope at the end that Palestine will be free. Yeah, but uh, I think of literature uh, and poems, especially in particular are a reflection for life. So you have to reflect through life in a way. But I'm not like that expert uh, of writing poetry, but like uh, the first thing to write is your experience, your uh, country, in this situation you have to reflect your country, like to tell the world that your country is not like in a good uh, state, and good situation. So we have to raise the awareness that our country, our homeland, Palestine, needs help. Uh, this is so really this is it. How we can use poetry to reflect on our, uh, on our yeah, life, especially Palestinian life. It is a weapon. Life. And so, I wrote another, yeah. another uh, poem, concrete poem. It's like a, uh, like a Palestinian map. And another one like uh, the, the star of Israeli uh, uh, flag. Two okay. concrete poems. Uh, Dr. Akram, I think you, you also reflected on the Palestinian issues uh, on different poems of, uh, of your uh, poems, right? So if you yeah. just share us something about your, of your poems. Okay, uh, first of all, uh, thank you Khalid. But like uh, Khalid reminds me of like, we have many, uh, you know, poets, published poets who graduated from the English department. And I'm not sure like, uh, you know, uh, you know, Ahmed Maqtad. Like he uh, has a book in poetry published in the United States. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, many, many students who, you know, are uh, like working to publish. Mm -hmm. So the English department... Most of them reflection of, uh, of the Palestinian issue, Yeah, right? some of them reflect, you know, it's political poetry because, mm -hmm. you know, you cannot escape. Today I was like talking about the relationship between the text and the word. Mm -hmm. And like, uh, you know, our, I mean, the word we are living and like dictates the kind of uh, you know text we are writing in fact uh, i want to add a poem uh, in which like i think when i wrote this poem i assumed uh, you know something called the third position uh, the third place it's metaphoric uh, like in which the persona is assuming an intercultural you know uh, identity so because i wanted to address the word and as I mentioned, like uh, this poem, I wrote it like to show how the Palestinian uh, did not like uh, have the same, uh, you know, uh, like pleasure when the new uh, the new year comes. So in this poem, I say it's called Homeless Christ. I say from the land of nativity, the source of creativity, Palestine, Palestine, our lovely land the land of the shepherd and the land of the lamb. From the land of pain and the red rock, from the land of the real birth, not the mock, the land of the ancient culture, the land of the nesting sculpture. To Christmas, to Christmas we do much apologize, cause we are still much agonized over the loss of our lads and lasses over the destruction of our houses, over the children who lost their parents, over our wives who have become bereft. Sorry Christmas. Sorry Christmas, Bethlehem is no longer what it used to be because the Israeli occupier has cleft it into A, B, and C. If Jesus, if Jesus were to come back, he would, he would find no place to pray. He would continue 
to curse the occupier. He would say, get out from the land of love and the land of peace. Because nothing, because nothing will ever end or my fury would appease unless, unless I witness, unless in the sky I see Palestine like a bird flying fully free. Thank you very much, Dr. Akram. This is a special meeting with you and with Khaled. And but the time is rushing, and we, it's hard to say bye-bye uh, and thank you for this. So our harbor, our boat has reached its, har its harbor, and it's the time to say thank you very much. Bye-bye for now.